Apple has been switching all its devices to USB-C for quite a few years now. It started with the MacBook Pro in 2016, which ditched the standard USB port in favor of USB-C only. Then the iPad Pro also adopted the port in 2018. Apple then also made the switch to the more affordable 2020 iPad Air. But what about the iPhone? Well, literally there has been rumors about a switch every year since about the iPhone 8. And yet it never came. Here I am wanting one charger and one cable to charge everything I own. It doesn't seem like it's coming, so I'll be making my own. I've been working on this problem for the past few months in my spare time and I finally figured out a first prototype to show that the electronics work. As you can probably see, it doesn't quite fit inside of the iPhone just yet, but this is just a proof of concept. Now the next step is to remove all the wires and make it all fit inside of the iPhone. I will start with a quick demo and then in a second part I will talk a little more about how I did it. So let's start with the goals of this project. I had two main specifications. The first one was full reversibility. That means if we take a Type-C to Type-C cable, we can plug it in any direction and it will always work. The second one is being able to support charging with a power brick as well as data transfers. So plug it into a computer to transfer files or do backups. PD fast charging also needs to be supported. Let's first demonstrate reversibility. Here I have my MacBook 96 watt charger. I'll plug it in mains power, like so. Make sure you can see all the cable. It's charging. Now I reverse the cable. Charging again, just for fun, I will replace it here. And it works, as we can see. And if we really want to try every combination, I can reverse it again. It charges. Now, this is good, but sometimes we have situations where we don't have a C2C cable and we have a USB type A to USB type C cable and so this also needs to be supported. We will try this right now. The type A can only go one way and the type C charges. The whole cable is here. Now I reverse it and it charges. So now we want to demonstrate the data functionality. If we take the standard C2C Apple cable and we plug it in any port, make sure the whole thing is visible and I plug it in. Here we go. So we can see that it's recognized here. If I click on it, it's loading. All the data about the phone is here. It's uh, storage, charging. Now, if I unplug it, turn around the charging cable and plug it in, the iPhone is detected again, so it works both ways. This part is to talk about the main idea behind the circuit. I will go over it briefly and then I will make a longer video explaining and detailing everything once the project is done. In 2019, Apple opened up its lightning to USB-C cable to third-party manufacturers through its MFI program. So those cables look like this. This is a cable I bought. It has USB-C and lighting on either side. The idea is what if I could fit this cable inside of the iPhone? I began investigating. I naively thought that maybe turning this male USB-C into a female port 
might work with such an adapter. This is against the Type-C specification and it turned out that reversibility didn't work. So because this didn't work, I started breaking down a lot of those USB-C cables and actually studying what's inside them and how do they work and the different types of cables that exist. And so then I was able to make a small circuit under there that actually is able to communicate with all those cables. So here my breakout board has two ports, but this is uh, just because it's the only breakout board I had. Really uh, in the final prototype, there will be only one. And so if we go back to our cable, I figure out this part, so the end part, the actual receptacle, but now we still have this part to figure out. And so it turns out that this is actually where all the brain of the project is. So this is where the chip is located that will communicate with the iPhone to negotiate power and to transfer data. And well, Apple does make this cable, I bought a few, and I tried to open it up to see what the inside looked like. Turns out though, the problem is that those cables are really built like tanks, so they're really hard to open up without breaking. And I also found out that the internals are not the same as the third party manufacturers. So for me, it turned out to not be a good option because A, they're too hard to open up and B, they're expensive. So I decided to stick with third party cables. Then I went on Amazon and I just bought all the cables I could find from different brands to see which one was the easiest to open because I thought I would need a lot of them and it would simplify my life in the future. Also, I figured out that actually every single one of those cables had the same internals and it turns out Apple sells this piece to the manufacturers and then the manufacturers do the rest. After doing more research, this connector is called C94. I'll put up a picture here. This is actually what I need in a project, is to work with this C94 product. But as you can see, it still looks like a lightning connector. First, what I needed to do was to make it already smaller and to be able to solder things into it. After a lot of trial and error, I, I found a way to actually remove the end of the connector and expose just the whole PCB because it's not a lightning connector that's soldered on a PCB, it's actually the whole thing is a PCB and the connector comes on top. And so once I removed this, I had this picture that actually I could not find anywhere. I'm sure somebody in China already did this before, but this is the first public picture that I found. I think it's quite interesting to see what it looks like. Now we need to look into the internals of the iPhone. And so more specifically, the charging port. If we order just the replacement part for that charging port, it looks like this. So this is a flex cable that plugs into the main board and here on the bottom we have a lightning port. And so when you connect the cable it goes like this. And now what I want to do is am I able to hardwire cables straight from that flex cable to this PCB by removing the charging port? Of course the answer is yes because I've already done it. Here we can see why it was important to remove the lightning port because here we have some kind of resin that if you try to solder something it's going to melt and mess up everything so really it was uh, useful to remove it and so once this was done this is basically the final result so we have our flex cable that is like this plugged in the lightning female port is removed replaced by wires soldered straight into the Apple C94 PCB and then this PCB is wired under my little test circuit and it's wired in such a way that will transform where usually there would be a male USB-C port, it would transform it into a female port that can talk to any cable. 
And so this is the idea behind the project. For the future, what I want to do is to actually simplify all this and make it way smaller so that it fits inside the iPhone. The first step will be to fully reverse engineer that little PCB to be able to reproduce it by myself. So make my own PCB the shape I want and just take the components and transfer them on the new PCB. And so once this is done, this will remove all those chunky wires and I will fit the type C port inside and then route that flex PCB I created somewhere else in the iPhone where I can find space and hopefully everything will fit. It will definitely be as much as a challenge as it was up until now, but I'm very motivated to do it. By the time you're watching this, I'm already working on it.